The Euphrates is one of the most important rivers in the world. Spanning from Turkey to Syria and then Iraq, this long stretch of river has been the major source of water in the region for over 10,000 years. But now this ancient river is drying up, caused by terrifying circumstances and plunging millions into an era of unprecedented drought. But the drying of the Euphrates doesn't come as a shock, as it has been predicted in a terrifying prophecy that seems to be coming true, as strange and ancient discoveries have been found underneath the dried riverbed. Discoveries that have left the world in shock. It has now been confirmed that Euphrates River has finally dried up and something terrifying is happening. The Euphrates River holds a special place in human history as it's responsible for creating the Fertile Crescent, a part of ancient Mesopotamia where the first and oldest recorded agricultural practices originally began. In times of old, the Euphrates provided a constant source of clean water for men to practice farming and other agricultural practices which later spread to other parts of the world. The Euphrates was also one of the first rivers to be recorded in the Bible as it was among the four rivers that were said to originate from the Garden of Eden. In biblical records, the Euphrates served as a key dividing barrier between the East and West, shaping key events such as wars and invasions that have in turn shaped the distribution of people and power in much of Asia and North Africa. The river's significance spreads as far back as over 450,000 years ago with Acheulean stone artifacts and the remains of early Homo erectus having been found buried in its banks, stretching a distance of over 1,730 miles originating from the Armenian mountains in eastern Turkey. The Euphrates is the longest river in Asia and together with the river Tigris makes up the Fertile Crescent. The river flows through steep gorges and canyons in Turkey, then through lowlands in Syria, before cutting clear across Iraq and entering into the Persian Gulf. But this ancient river is now drying up with a significant drop in water levels across the length of the river's path. In most places in the lower path of the river, mostly in Iraq, the river has completely dried up with the riverbed completely visible, with what used to be submerged underwater now barren lands of cracked soil. In most places where the water has dried up, farmlands have become barren as there is no source of irrigation water for the crops, pushing villages into unusually long droughts. The fishing economies of these locations are now practically non-existent, as whatever small pools of water are left are contaminated or undrinkable. The once fertile crescent that gave birth to the world's agriculture is now a desolate land and is now practically unrecognizable from the last decade. But the question is, what caused this once powerful flowing river to dry up almost overnight and what does it mean for those who depend on its waters to survive? While there is something biblical and almost unnatural that is believed to have caused the river to dry up and the slew of strange things that have been found underneath the river, there have been a string of human activities that have added to the river's untimely demise. The Euphrates makes up a large part of the economies of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, with each country tapping into the river's vast resources to maintain agriculture, hydroelectric power plants, and irrigation water for farming. All three countries have had numerous clashes regarding the control and usage of the Euphrates, with Turkey having the most control over the flow of the river as it originates from the Armenian mountains in East Turkey. The treaties between these three countries go as far back as World War I, when the borders in and around the region were drawn following the Treaty of Luzern in 1923. The treaty stipulated how the three riparian states of the Euphrates would utilize the water in a way that would be mutually beneficial to all three countries along the river's length. This included any future dams or construction of hydraulic installations that would be placed on the river to generate hydroelectricity, considering the number of dams built by Turkey would significantly affect the flow of the Euphrates into Syria, with much of its effect being placed on Iraq. An agreement was reached in 1946 in which Turkey agreed to report any hydraulic changes or constructions on the Euphrates River. This would allow Iraq to construct dams on Turkish territory to manage the flow of the Euphrates such that the population within Iraq is not adversely affected by any such constructions made in Turkey. Syria and Turkey were the first to complete hydroelectric dams on the Euphrates barely within a year of each other to fill reservoirs in 1975. 
Coincidentally, the entire Fertile Crescent was hit with severe drought, which in addition to the newly built dams caused a significant reduction in the river's flow to Iraq. Iraq, which normally experienced over 15 cubic kilometers of water flow in 1973, saw a significant reduction to barely 9 cubic kilometers in 1975. This resulted in a significant crisis within Iraq pushing the nation to threaten to bomb the Tabqa Dam in Turkey, which was a major cause of the reduction in the river's flow to Iraq. Following a series of negotiations, an agreement was eventually reached between the three nations in which the dams were subsequently opened, increasing the flow of the Euphrates down to Iraq. But that was only the first in a series of crises involving the flow of the Euphrates, with Iraq almost always getting the short end of the stick, as dams and reservoirs being built in Turkey and Syria resulted in a reduction in the flow of water down to the Iraqi plains. Following a bilateral agreement in 1989, there seemed to be a consensus between Syria and Iraq, with Syria agreeing to release 60% of the amount of flowing water it received from Turkey into Iraq. This agreement lasted for over 20 years, with no significant disagreements between the three nations on the rationing of the water from the Euphrates. This was until Turkey rolled out the southeastern Anatolia project, also known as GAP. Amongst the three nations, Turkey and Syria have more dams and hydroelectric power plants on the Euphrates, with Syria having over six major dams located on the Euphrates alone, and Turkey having well over 22 dams and hydroelectric power plants, all situated along the Euphrates and Tigris River. Iraq, on the other hand, barely has two major dams on the Euphrates, both of which are in poor condition as they were built in the late 80s and have seen very little use with the continuous reduction of water inflow from the Syrian end of the Euphrates River. Syria on its own has the Tabqa Dam, which is the country's largest reservoir, located on Lake Assad, with over 500,000 hectares of farmlands depending on the dam for irrigation and drinking water. Both Syria and Turkey have also built smaller dams on the tributaries and streams connected to the Euphrates, further maximizing the river's potential, much to the detriment of Iraq. The launch of the GAP project was Turkey's way of harnessing the irrigation and hydroelectricity production potential of the Euphrates River for its southeastern provinces. The project provides for a total area of 80,000 square kilometers and affects over 10 million people and provides irrigation water to nearly 1 million hectares of agricultural land located on the Euphrates Basin, which makes up over 20% of the irrigable land in all of Turkey. The construction of the Ataturk Dam as part of the Gap project was a significant win for the Turkish people standing over 600 feet high and nearly 6,000 feet long and capable of holding over 90% of the total discharge of the Euphrates. While this is all impressive, it spells discomfort for Syria and outright doom for Iraq. Seeing the devastating potential the Gap project would have on the downstream states, the World Bank initially withheld funding until an official agreement was met between the three nations on sharing water from the Euphrates. But that didn't stop the cascading effect of the numerous dams being built in Turkey and Syria from affecting Iraq in the most devastating way. Over the course of the last two decades, water flow from the Euphrates River has been continually reduced, subsequently depriving regions and areas that depend on the river for irrigation and drinking water. Sometime in April of 2014, Turkey began to drastically reduce the flow of the Euphrates into Syria, and in May of that year, the flow was cut off almost completely, causing the river to terminate almost completely at the Turkish-Syrian border. This action by Turkey was in clear violation of the initial agreement reached by the three nations in 1987, where Turkey had committed to releasing a minimum of 500 cubic meters of water per second across the Syrian border. Consequently, the drying up of the Euphrates River has a more devastating effect on Iraq as the country has created an intricate network of canals connecting the Euphrates to several lakes and reservoirs. These reservoirs were used to store excess floodwaters resulting from the Euphrates, which was subsequently used for irrigation purposes for agriculture and farmlands. One of the major canals was the main outfall drain, also called the Third River, which was constructed in Iraq and stretches over 560 kilometers between the Euphrates and the Tigris River. 
This canal was a highly important part of the internal irrigation network of the country as it prevented soil salinization by providing irrigation water and also allowed large freight barges to navigate from the Euphrates and Tigris up to Baghdad. Today, the Third River is all but dried up, as satellite images show that the long stretch of water has practically vanished. The closing of these dams on the Euphrates in the Turkish region has had a devastating impact on the environment of the surrounding riparian countries. These effects are mostly felt in Syria and Iraq, with almost 400 villages and settlements on the Euphrates Basin having their source of water completely vanish almost overnight. Almost 200,000 people across the Euphrates Basin have been displaced and have had to be resettled in other less affected areas. Many of the displaced people were extremely unhappy with their new situation, as it is seen to be entirely the fault of a greedy government aiming to provide for its own people to the detriment of millions of others. The closure of these dams, especially in Turkey, has not only drastically reduced the level of water flowing through the Euphrates, but has significantly contaminated the water that remains on the riverbed. This is because water from Turkey and Syria most times contains dissolved fertilizer chemicals used on fields which are then released into the Euphrates River, headed into Iraq, and has drastically increased the salinity of the water, making it practically unsuitable for drinking. But the subsequent drought that has devastated the entire Fertile Crescent hasn't solely been the result of the closure of dams, but also the creation of several reservoirs and lakes on the Euphrates. These large lakes and reservoirs all have extremely wide surface areas, and in a region with extremely high temperatures, this has led to an unprecedented increase in evaporation, which has facilitated the total loss of water from these regions. Climate change and increased surface temperature on the planet have aided in surface water evaporation, which previously affected areas now experiencing devastating droughts. A recent study into the annual evaporation of reservoirs in the regions has it that Turkey experiences an estimated 2 cubic kilometers of annual evaporation, with Syria experiencing 1 cubic kilometer of evaporation, and Iraq experiencing over 5 cubic kilometers of annual evaporation across its regions. But while the subsequent droughts currently experienced along the Euphrates River could be attributed to the construction and closure of dams across the river, there are other opinions regarding the current state of the Euphrates. There are biblical references that make mention to a prophecy regarding the drying up of the Euphrates which we are seeing unfold in today's world. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the Euphrates played a critical role as it was one of the very first rivers to originate from the Garden of Eden and also acted as a means of support for the Israeli army. The ancient Babylonians and Assyrians built their empire in what is referred to today as Mesopotamia, which is the current area of land surrounded on both sides by both the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. According to biblical references, the Euphrates flowed through Babylon as it served as the city's source of nourishment for its crops and provided water for the Babylonian people. In a nutshell, the city of Babylon could not have survived without the Euphrates, and archaeological records would show that the Babylonians built structures in and around the Euphrates River. But just as the Euphrates River served as a protective barrier around the Babylonian Empire, it also played a key role in the downfall of one of the earliest advanced civilizations in human history. Ancient archaeological records state that the city of Babylon was captured by the Persian army, which was only made possible as the Persians were able to divert the flow of the Euphrates, completely cutting off one section of the river and proceeding to invade Babylon at night, marching across the riverbed itself. But the Book of Revelations tells us a horrifying prophecy of the drying up of the Euphrates. According to Revelation 6.12, which says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water therefore was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. This portion of the Bible holds a striking resemblance to what we are currently seeing happening on the Euphrates today, as the waters have dried up at a much faster pace than has ever been recorded in history. According to the book of Revelations, during the end times, the sixth angel of God will cause the Euphrates to dry up, but it also revealed something more terrifying could emerge from the dry underground bed of the Euphrates. Revelation 9 verse 13 to 15 says, Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, 
and I heard a voice speaking from the four horns of the gold altar that stands in the presence of God. And the voice said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound to the great Euphrates River. Then the four angels who had been prepared for this hour and day and month and year were turned loose to kill one-third of all the people on earth. According to this portion of the Bible, four fallen angels were bound in chains under the Euphrates River. And during the last days as the river begins to dry, the angel of God will cause these fallen angels to be loose upon the earth to wreak havoc during the days of the apocalypse. To non-Christians, this may simply sound like religious annotations, but there have been some strange occurrences observed on the riverbed of the Euphrates as people have been venturing into areas of the river that were previously inaccessible as they were underwater. People have discovered caves and caverns in strange shapes that are not common to any caves that could have been constructed by man. Some of these caves have a striking similarity to prison bars designed to hold someone or something prisoner. And in addition to these weirdly shaped caves, archaeologists and even common people have recorded various terrifying sounds coming from the ground. Some have described the sounds as noises of groaning and agony that would simply make your skin crawl and give you nightmares. People have recorded groans and growls with some even stating they have heard what could be likened to move in chains originating from under the earth. Religious bodies have explained this to be the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, but that leaves one major question. If the drying up of the Euphrates is, is indeed the fulfillment of prophecy, does that mean fallen angels will soon emerge to wipe out one-third of the human population? These questions have led to even more questions that they have provided answers to, but what we do know for a fact is that the region surrounding the Euphrates River is threatened with a desertification that could wipe out nearly 40% of the region with reduced annual rainfall and the subsequent drying up of the river.